Joining me now this Easter Sunday is Associate Editor at The Australian, Graeme Lloyd. Graeme, great to see you. The Prime Minister, in our interview earlier in the program, he says politics have changed, that when you look at the Aston by-election result, he points to that in sounding still optimistic, quite optimistic about uh, securing a vote for The Voice, even in the face of the Coalition's opposition to the proposal. Yes, good morning, Kieran. Well, it's been a, a very significant week uh, in The Voice this week because uh, Peter Dutton has declared that he will campaign against it. Uh, history shows that if there is an effective no uh, campaign, referendums struggle uh, very much to, to get up. Um, the Prime Minister is making the case that things have changed and he, he's really saying that we've entered a new, uh, more cooperative style of politics, which is probably uh, wishful thinking in a, a big regard. But uh, they can point to New South Wales where Chris Minns was seen as a relatively cooperative opposition leader he was successful at the state general election, uh, but he only got a minority government. And then we go to the Aston by-election and uh, Labor won. Uh, the Prime Minister is extrapolating that across the nation and saying uh, this is a new paradigm. This wasn't expected to happen in Melbourne. It has happened. Therefore, things will be different for The Voice. Uh, you could argue that's a heroic assumption. Uh, there's uh, really needs to be uh, tested. Uh, but what, what, what has changed uh, to a large extent is this will be the first referendum that, that's held in the age uh, of uh, social media. Uh, I think uh, there's a campaign that's being geared up uh, that involves the corporate sector, it involves sporting bodies and uh, a big cross-section of the community uh, will be out in force uh, prosecuting a yes case. Uh, so in that sense it may be more difficult for the opposition to, uh, to get its point across and given that it's a very complicated point it's trying to make, uh, you know, the Prime Minister is backing that the vibe is going to win the day. So on the Liberal Party's stance, what do you make of it and the reaction to it? Well, they're certainly uh, copping a lot of heat uh, for not going along with the party. Uh, of course, every government would like an opposition to simply agree with everything they want to do. And, and Labor makes a specialty of uh, accusing uh, the opposition of being non-cooperative and just saying no. But really, that is the nature of politics. Uh, Peter Dutton is, is coming under a, a lot of heat now uh, be, because he's seen as obstructionist and uh, the comments are, that he is really destroying the, the Liberal Party brand. However, if you look at uh, what happens after long-term governments and uh, either side of party, they, they go into opposition uh, and they really struggle to uh, rebuild momentum and, and the case. Uh, and this is very early in the time of uh, opposition. So uh, they, there's uh, no uh, sort of absolute uh, need for the Liberal Party to uh, remake itself as a government at this point in time. And we must also realise that uh, Peter Dutton's position is supported by a large number of voters and particularly coalition voters. Uh, there was a news poll uh, out earlier in the week uh, and it showed a majority support for The Voice, but there was a, a big uh, no element as well. And if you like, uh, Peter Dutton is representing that side of the argument. The build-up to the budget now very much uh, on the on the radar. The government's low, um, the, well, the low and middle income tax offset looks like that's going to go among the savings ahead of Jim Chalmers' second budget, Graeme. Yes, it's uh, a lot moving in the budget preparations and the significance this week was the decision by the Reserve Bank to keep interest rates uh, where they were. Uh, the, the Governor has said, well, uh, we will pause rates the heavy lifting uh, now falls to the government and they need to grow productivity and rein in spending or interest rates will continue to rise. Uh, this is the context in which uh, the government needs to approach the budget uh, and uh, really it's all about where they can pull money back and uh, avoid spending it if they, they don't really need to. Yeah, exactly.
and, and work in conjunction with monetary policy from the RBA. How's the broader economy looking? You and I have been talking about this for, uh, for several weeks now. The, the difficulties uh, from the, the banking issues internationally to inflation across the board, it continues. That, that's right. Everything at the moment is being uh, considered in the context of what is going to happen to the uh, global banking community. Uh, there, there's been fraying at the edges both in the US and in Europe. And uh, the, the losers in that have largely been bondholders. And it's going to take a long time for the pain of that to filter through the uh, sort of economic community more broadly. Uh, so decisions are being made about uh, will there be a need to respond to crisis at some point in time? And the other eye, of course, is on uh, where do interest rates go from here? Uh, mounting evidence that uh, internationally interest rates have peaked. Uh, the issue is how quickly they will return to a level that the uh, that major uh, reserves are, uh, are comfortable with. Now, in Australia, we uh, are exposed to what happens overseas. Uh, you look at um, really what's going forward. Uh, people coming off fixed rates onto variable rates, there, there's a big balloon, if you like, of that happening over the next couple of months. Uh, and that's yeah. really going to uh, show how resilient the community spending is. Associate Editor at The Australian, Graham Lloyd. Happy Easter. See you next week. Thank you.